Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy at Tested. Also from at Tested. Tested. At Tested, what is this? I don't know, at Tested. We okay. just got back from the Oculus E3 event. E3 is next week, but they announced the Rift and some novel input solutions. We're gonna run down all of the announcements. Hold on, you say novel VR solution, novel input solutions like it's a bad thing. What you mean is VR native input solutions. Right. So let's not call them novel. And uh, we also recorded a podcast earlier. You can check that. We have a really in-depth discussion there, but we're going to run down uh, what that was announced and some of our thoughts. Uh, first is the headset. It's, of course, called the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, they announced the uh, it's two panels, uses optics, uh, custom optics. Uh, we think it's for now lenses. The resolution is same as the HTC Vive. Um, I think we think they're oriented in the portrait orientation, a wide field of vision running at at least 90 frames per second for your mm -hmm. games, uh, which gives you your low persistence flickering. So when you move your head, there's no blurring, there's no judder. Well, and they're using all the stuff that, they've that we've talked about in all of the Oculus tech demos over the last year You're and basing and a half. all that information on Crystal Cove. Yes, right? that's right. They didn't actually announce those specs today, that's but right. we think that's right. Uh, what they did announce today were uh, the ergonomics, which is the big thing, how you're going to wear this headset. They said it would be very light, and based on what we saw on stage and the renders, it's, uh, it's a rigid bar that goes across your temple and around the back of your ear, and then to this kind of triangular uh, back plate. In it the looks back. like a V on the back of your head that cups the, that divot on the back of your cranium, it looks like. What that means is that when you wear it, it's going to be more like wearing a baseball cap, with the instead of wearing ski goggles. And one of the things they said is that when you put it on, it's like putting on a baseball cap. I don't know about you guys, every time I've ever put on a baseball cap, it's from the back of my head forward. They showed somebody putting on a baseball cap and an Oculus from the front of their head back. I suppose you could do that. It seems a little crazy to me. They, they spent a lot of time talking about how light the headset is. It doesn't push on your face. It rides on your temples, on the strap, and on the back of your head. The brow. Um, I, I, I mean, did you, we, we didn't really get to spend any time at all with the headsets today. I think you touched one briefly. Did it feel like it was a real headset or a prototype, or could you tell? Um, I couldn't tell based on the non-working demo they had on stage, but we could tell about the fabric. Now, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Instead of using a hard plastic clamshell, injection molded plant, uh, clamshell, what they have surrounding the hardware is fabric material. And what the fabric allows is one, lightweight, two, um, it's stretchy, so when you adjust, for example, the lenses for your IPD adjustment in the bottom, it'll actually just stretch that fabric on the inside. And three, it masks more of your face. So wh where the headset connects to your face, you get less light leakage. So, so you're, what I assume from looking at the pictures on Oculus's website is that instead of having a hard plastic shell underneath that fabric, it's literally the electronics and all, like the frame for the glasses is under the fabric, and there is no hard plastic shell. There's a frame, but probably not, like, there's no solid stuff all the way through that thing, not which is really through. interesting. That's right. Uh, there's still the IR LEDs hidden underneath that. I presume they're still in the back as well. Uh, something new, micro or uh, headphones mm -hmm. built those, in. Those were on the prototypes we saw at CES. They can now be here. removed. Right. Ooh. So instead of being able to flip up uh, to remove the headphones, if you want to use your own headphones for the positional sound, you can just pop them off. This is great if you want to use your own headset. Say you're playing a multiplayer game, you want to have a boom microphone in front of your mouth you won't have to deal with those things being in the way. Now something they didn't talk about on stage that Palmer said afterward for the press is that it, the adjustments, so you can see these Velcro straps on the rigid sides, you're only supposed to adjust those the once for your head before you, when you get your VR headset. How, how do you do that if you're not supposed to have them on your head when you do the adjustment? That's the part well, I don't Well maybe understand. you just do it on your head the one time and yeah. then the tightening is actually just that top mm -hmm. Velcro strap, which is a loose strap on the top over your head. Uh, questions we have? Again, don't know what that field of view is, how the faceplate stuff will swap out, which you can actually swap out for wearing glasses. You mean the, 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 the cloth, inside the and inside the cloth. mesh. Uh, we don't know where that microphone is. If there's a microphone. If, well, we're hope they said the microphone's in a, uh, back in September. It's located yep. in the most obvious place. No mention, no mention today, though. I think it's on the camera. Uh, that's actually a very good guess. Yeah. Um, and then the tracking for the headset is actually done doing their IR tracking with the, the camera system. Uh, the camera now comes built on a micro or on a, on a stand, mm -hmm. about like one or one and a half foot tall stand. puts on your desk, has this conical uh, view of the IR LEDs. The arrangement looks a little different than it does on the Crescent Bay or the DK2, and they're calling it Constellation. They said that the, there's a thread mount on the bottom of that of that camera, so if you want to put it on a one quarter inch, a standard one quarter inch, oh, that's twenty good. thread tripod, you can. Mm. Which is and good. that will come bundled. Um, so, so speaking of things that come bundled, yes. Uh, Phil Schiller from Microsoft was there. He actually brought out uh, Xbox One controller. 
they're bundling the Xbox One controller and the wireless dongle with the Oculus as a kit. So it'll be the min-spec controller. It's not a min-spec VR controller. It's just a gamepad. It's a nice gamepad, I, I guess. think this is a big deal. It's a statement by Oculus that, one, they want to make this as friendly for everyone as possible. They're not gonna go as bold to say that you have to use a VR-specific controller like the Steam VR system, like with the Lighthouse controllers. But, the, uh, but gamepads aren't friendly for normal people, especially if you're in a video game. If, do you know where the X button is on your gamepad? Do you know, know where the Y button buttons. is? Right, but how are you going to find which one if you can't look down and see I where the buttons are? I think their point is that, that that type of the modal control, you don't have to think of, if you play you know, Nintendo games, if you played Xbox games, you get two-stick control. And for the games that have already been in development from DK2 to now, and for the stuff for the Gear VR, I, they're, all game they're all gamepad games. They're all gamepad games. And this gives developers parity, so they, they know every single person that they're developing for has this interface. That That's absolutely true. I think that the, the big takeaway for me on the gamepad is that it's a massively limited control space for developers to work against. And yes, they've been building games for probably two years in some cases now that use gamepads, so it's probably too late to shift when they finally figure this out. But when you look at what Valve can do with the Steam VR controllers and the fact that you basically have infinite you know, control space to do simi type stuff, to do more complex interactions with the games, being limited to a gamepad is gonna, it says to me that this is a product that's for existing gamers, people who are interested in playing games on their consoles and PCs right now, not people who don't know the difference between the X and the Y button without having to look down at the gamepad. Um, what they also says is that there's a partnership between Microsoft and Facebook, essentially, for this. Now, we know Sony is coming out with Morpheus. They have a VR solution. Microsoft hasn't talked about VR at all uh, for Xbox or otherwise. But on the PC side, they have a vested interest in Windows 10. And this is going to be a Windows-compatible device. So the Xbox it's native, One, Windows native, native device. Native. So it's a plug-and-play for Windows. Bundling the Xbox One controller for Windows, which only works on Windows 10, mm -hmm. helps Microsoft's the, case. The wireless dongle. The wireless dongle um, helps Microsoft's case, and also they have the novel streaming as well. Uh, this is stream rendering on the Xbox One being piped to the Oculus headset. What you basically see is an encoded video over mm -hmm. your network or Wi-Fi or wired. Uh, there's going to be latency there. In a but, virtual cinema kind of environment. And that's how they get rid of the latency problem uh, for playing the game, is that what's going to be, the virtual cinema will theoretically be rendered locally on your PC, right. and then they also hinted at some social interaction so, in the future. So just to be clear, it's a little ridiculous because you're turning a $1,500 gaming PC plus Oculus headset into what is essentially a virtual display with some added latency for your Xbox One. Low which res is too. Less capable yeah. than the Xbox, yes. than, than the PC you're connecting to. I, I think to. it is ridiculous until you start to consider the social implications. I mean, once you start to be able to play Xbox with other friends who aren't actually in the same mm -hmm. building as you, it's kind of interesting. I mean, that is that's that is cool-ish. Yeah. It's the kind of thing I'll definitely try once. I'll, give a, I'll, I'll go that far. Yep. Um, so, so the controller, uh, there was a revision of the Xbox One controller mm -hmm. uh, recently. Uh, that one does, we don't know whether it has IMU. The old Xbox One controller doesn't does have not. motion but sensing. It does have a couple of IR LEDs on the front that the Kinect can use to pair the controller with the Xbox One. I've only gotten that to work successfully once with an Xbox One. I'll be interested to see. Huh. They could have tweaked something in the design of the controller to make it more Oculus compatible going forward. And you know, Microsoft and Facebook are tight. There's nothing, you know, Microsoft invested in Facebook. There's nothing saying that they couldn't actually have changed the design of this in some small way to accommodate the, the Oculus and partnership. And Brendan Uribe did hint that you could apply these LEDs, the IR LEDs, to other objects in the real, real world, world objects. in the future. Yeah. There's no reason why that couldn't mm -hmm. be a keyboard, a mouse, or a gamepad. So okay, great. so the um, other hardware they well, showed. Well, games and, and, and software, uh, they tr trotted out a few game developers. Four. Um, they showed uh, Eve Valkyrie, a, a video Again. demo, same YouTube trailer that we've all seen. Um, they showed uh, the new Project Kronos that the people who made um, Hero Bound for Gear VR now have. It's an uh, action third RPG, person, third action person. RPG. Uh, the interesting thing about this is it's not photorealistic. So it, it looks, it's a stylized, if you've played Fable or something like that, it, it's a very stylized looking game. So they, they were showing a good mix of photorealistic and not photorealistic games and kind of everything in between, which which I like. I think that especially early on, we're gonna have much better luck and much better experiences in VR with more stylized approaches, analogous to what, my, what Nintendo always does with their lower powered consoles, right? And then also Insomniac Games had their a new action RPG or whatever horror game. I think game. it's a hard, it looks hard, hard uh, to me. Third person, but the big takeaway there was that the way they show these trailers 
wasn't really indicative of how the VR would play. Yeah. Um, and you know, the camera angles, the cinematic style of moving the camera in the trailer versus what the actual gameplay would be, the big problem is how to sell these games to people. This is a problem they're gonna have going forward. If you think about, if you think about how you, like they can't take this, the normal split, you know, two Oculus viewport display. Even when I've streamed Oculus games on YouTube, the people on YouTube lose their mind because they're like, why do you have this huge screen? Why are you showing the same screen twice? What, what is going on with this? It's just like it's difficult to convey the experience of putting on a pair of VR goggles and saying, hey, after five minutes doing this, your brain feels like the things that you're seeing are real. Being able to show what in-game footage looks like without being able to show it on stereo displays and all that is really challenging. Like there's, there's no reason Oculus couldn't have had VR goggles in that room for everybody that sat down. We did the whole thing in VR, except they wanted to also stream it out to the rest of the yeah. world. And if they had done that, that experience would have been terrible. This is what drives like 3D TV marketers to make commercials where things are jumping out of the TV into your living room. Yeah. It's, it's not indicative of what the actual experience looks like. Right. But it's interesting that they have developed their own software, the Oculus Home. That's right. Where games, if you browse home in VR, you'll be able to actually get a glimpse of what the game looks like in a 3D environment. Because the gamut of VR experiences is just beyond, it's not just third person, there's third person, first person, there's panoramic video. So in Oculus Home, it looks a lot like the current Oculus Home. It's like a floating uh, curved HUD, think of like a, a PlayStation or Xbox uh, HUD, uh, but there, it's in a virtual environment. And that virtual environment, uh, right now it's like a, a penthouse, a Malibu apartment or something, uh, that can be an actual game space uh, when you're trying to sample a game. So you export your, the developer exports a scene from their game, mm -hmm. gives you an opportunity to kind of walk around and take a look at it before you've bought anything, which I think is really good yeah. for yeah. this type yeah. of experience. Friends list there, there's desktop versions, you can you know sign with, chat with friends, you can load, join friends from the desktop, put on the headset, and then jump in the game. One other thing that they showed in the game's reel, they, they, so they showed four lengthy trailers, and then they had a, a quick like sizzle reel with a few seconds footage from a bunch of different games. I think the VR sports challenge uh, is looks super neat. It was basically first person virtual reality sports games for like the traditional team sports, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer. Um, like the, the opportunity to sit and use motion controls and have a virtual reality experience of being an NHL goalie or a batter in the major leagues. Super, super interesting to me. Yeah. I don't even like sports. I would love to see if I can hit a 100 but mile you, an hour you like fastball. Wii Sports, right? I love Wii Sports. Yeah, Oculus be needs its Wii Sports, its yeah. killer app. Now, it has input beyond the controller, uh, the Xbox controller. And this is Oculus Touch, the big hardware announcement today. Now, you should know Oculus Touch will not ship with the Rift. You can pre order it when the Rift is available to pre order, but they said on Twitter it will be available in the first half of 2016, but while the where Oculus is the, yeah, for Q1. Q1. Well, the first quarter is inside the first half. Yeah, but you know what they say first half. They mean March 31st. Yeah, but yeah. it's not gonna be packed in. Yeah. So this will be a set, like a third Yeah. So this accessory. is, a, this I think, we didn't talk about this in the podcast much. I think that this is a big, a big flub, right? Not shipping a VR native control solution with the hardware, even if it would increase the cost, means that this is going to a subset of people who own the Rift are going to own this, and anybody who develops games is going to have to have a fallback position mm -hmm. for the gamepad. But it's, it's deliberate though, because I mean, obviously, Vive is doing a VR that's true. input solution, yep. so that's their path. So Oculus has said, let's take probably a much cheaper route. It's going to be a less expensive unit than the Vive, I would bet, wouldn't mm -hmm. you? I, so, I the you mean on the hardware sense? Yeah, probably. I know the cost My on those is. sensors is real low. You mean you're talking about for the controllers itself, or for yeah, the controllers for, for and the, the glasses, thing, for the whole, whole package. Thing. I, I don't know. Microsoft's going to want seventy bucks for their thing, and like, who knows? We're, we'll we'll know True. more hopefully after. I'm imagining it is prices. less expensive, and it, there's you know everyone knows how to use the gamepad. There's everyone who's made VR games for the past two and a half years since the DK one came out. Everyone's done gamepad games. There's some, there's something to be but, said for let's you know allow developers to make what they know how to make. I just I think the the intuitive nature of reaching out and grabbing things yeah, and right. having a touchpad on your thumb yes. is is so far, like that opens it up to everyone. Mm -hmm. And if Facebook's goal buying Oculus is to make VR the way we communicate in the future, not shipping this with the first wave matters. Of course, the other way to look at this is probably the first wave doesn't matter for the mainstream. They're gonna roll this out to the people who buy video games, the people who have been long-term gamers and don't blink about spending a thousand or $500 or whatever it's gonna cost 
to get the hardware and and let them figure out the kinks and then they'll have everything in Best Buy and and Sears and you'll be able to try this for real yeah. in Q4 2016 2017 the other thing in, in is the they, future. They didn't mention when we'd be even get developer kits That's for right. the uh, handheld the uh, what do they call Oculus Touch? Touch. touch. So, so let's I mean, explain to people yeah. first. Yeah, we what should talk about what Touch, touch is. is. So you got to imagine these are two wireless controllers. They're kind of like the nunchuck a part of the Wii controller, the, just the small thing. They look small, they look lightweight, at least from these prototypes that we picked up. Um, and you have a trigger for your thumb, a thumbstick for the top and two buttons on each side, but also this ring around your index finger. Like your, your finger kind of protrudes through it. As if you're holding a gun, it would just be from the knuckle, for, the first knuckle forward. It's like bracelet size. Yes. And yeah. the ring, even though they're bracelet size, they don't fit around your wrist. They just hang, they, they're locked in place around the front of the controller. And this is for positional tracking mm -hmm. of the controller. And, and maybe also finger tracking too. It's unclear. About right, so that. on the outward side, there's uh, IR LEDs, two rows of them around the outside. Now, presumably, that camera that you get with the Oculus Rift will see these LEDs and know where these controllers are in relation to each other and your headset. But also, they said that there's gestural sensors on the inside of the ring. Mm -hmm. So you can do things like point or give someone the finger or thumbs up yep. and in the game they would or in the software you can actually pull that data and use it. So for what it's worth, I think that the the two having two sticks, four buttons, four triggers is plenty of control surface for using virtual hands in video games, right? Because the, the benefit of using that second, the, they call it the hand trigger, the one that triggers on your middle finger, is that you can use that to pick stuff up, and then you can still use the main trigger to, to you know, pew pew, to pull Manipulate. the trigger of a gun. Yeah. You could use uh, one hand to pick up a clip, the other hand to slam it, the other button to slam it in, whatever. There's like, like lots of options. It makes it gives you a lot of verbs mm -hmm. for the games that you're designing, I want, is there, and it gives you a way to port Vive games I was, to the that's Oculus. That's what I was going to ask. Is there parity? Is there feature parity between these two interfaces? Not, there isn't because the Oculus has one more set of triggers. But the Vive doesn't have that hand trigger. But mm -hmm. if you assume that the people have been developing games for the Vive for the last year, the year and a half since since the Steam Developer Conference, right. then you assume that they're that that at least they have a superset, not a subset. Right. So you can port from Vive, and then in the future, Oculus may be more capable and. And you know, there's nothing saying that you know Valve Steam Controller has has an under under side button for that same kind of grabbing. There's nothing to say that they couldn't add that to the to the Steam Controller. Although the dev kit's already out. So I know a lot of people are going to ask, what do you think? Is the Vive Controller? Let's assume that, you know, not talking about shipping, but what's better for tracking? We, as we as haven't as seen any demos. We don't know. We we're haven't gonna, seen anything. Next week, we're going to try the Toy Box demo at E3. From a pure technological Hope. standpoint, there are a lot of questions because Vive is using Lighthouse system, which tracks in one way. It's like kind of like triangulation, kind of like GPS. It's kind of like GPS. While the Oculus tracks the other way, where it's a camera looking at IR lights. We don't know which one's more accurate. We're gonna have to try that out. The, the, and we don't know that we're gonna get to use Touch at E3 either. So we'll see. We'll see. Know all that stuff more next week, I guess. Um, I think we're not going to really know how this stuff works until we actually have shipping hardware, shipping games, and can sit down in our in our quiet dens at home, put on the headphones, and and jack into virtual reality. No word on pricing. No word on yet as to when you'll be able to pre-order. Uh, we just know that Valve says Lighthouse and CVR out by end of this year. We know that Oculus is going to release the the headset and the controller and the camera Q1 and that new Oculus Touch by the first half of next year. We have a lot more VR coverage on test.com. Like I said, we talk a lot here, but we've been talking more there's, in depth. There's an hour on our in podcast. The podcast. So check that out this week's episode of This is Only a Test. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys next time.